Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Community Baptist Church here on this beautiful Memorial Day weekend. My name is Pastor Joe Jackson. I'm so glad you joined with us for our Sunday School Hour as we have this wonderful time of fellowship together, remembering all that God has done in our lives and studying in God's Word. In just a minute, we're going to have a wonderful lesson on how to celebrate Memorial Day, honoring our heroes honoring our heroes on Memorial Day. And we're gonna be doing this the Sunday School Hour. So if you're just coming in here for the very first time, go ahead and grab your Bible, grab the family, turn off any distractions, and let's make certain we have a time of fellowship together. I do wanna give you a couple quick announcements as we get ready for our service this morning. Tonight at 6 p.m. we will be meeting out in the open air. I'm so grateful for uh, the CDC sending out some messages over this weekend about churches and some ways that people can practice safe social distancing. And one of the ways they said that you could do that was to meet out in the open air. And I thought, what a, I was talking with pastor, he said, what a better opportunity than on Memorial Day weekend on Sunday night at 6 p.m. if we as a church met together and were able to fellowship with other believers, safe social distancing under our pavilion and be able to to hear the word of God and do a Memorial Day weekend walkthrough. And we would like you to join with us as we honor our troops, as we try to let people know the goodness of God and thank God for his blessings and then honor those who followed in Christ's steps where Jesus Christ said it best, no greater love have any man than this than a land lay down his life for his friends. And we get to honor those who gave their last full measure of devotion so our nation could be free so that we as a church that we as a people, we as Americans could celebrate in freedom and in hope and in liberty. So I hope that you'll join with us at 6 p.m. We'll also have a live stream service today at 11. And we hope that you'll be a part of that or you'll join us in person in the building as we'll be celebrating all that God has done. I know that pastor is going to be preaching a wonderful lesson uh, in the, from the Bible about honoring those who gave their lives. And I think you'll be encouraged by it. I said, I hope you'll enjoy that. I hope you'll come. I said, the evening we'll have a history of more Memorial Day. It'd be a great walk through. I think you'll find it rather encouraging. Well, let's do a little lesson this morning. I hope that you're ready for it. If you have your Bibles, we're going to be focusing in 1 Chronicles 11. But I want you to remember that what Memorial Day is all about. Memorial Day is a holiday that I find quite unique and quite special. Most of our holidays have to deal with us having fellowship and fun with family and uh, spending time enjoying ourselves. I think Memorial Day has kind of fallen into that habit. And I really want us to focus on what Memorial Day originally started as. It was remembering those who had sacrificed. It was built and set up for a time, it was originally called Decorations Day. And it was built after the Civil War so that people would remember those who had sacrificed and honor them and honor their families. So let's go ahead and let's do this lesson on honoring heroes. What is the biblical response? How should we as Christians biblically honor heroes? How can we follow the Memorial Day theme and does it match what the Christians are supposed to do? Well, I think we can find a, a good reference here. And we can find a very good reference here in in second and sorry first chronicles first chronicles chapter number 11 verse number 16 and 19 i'll read this real quick for you if you have your bible go ahead and you can read it and the bible says and david was in the hold and the philistine garrison was at bethlehem and david longed said oh that one would give me a drink of the water of the well of bethlehem that is at the gate and the three, this is David's three mightiest soldiers, break through the host of the Philistines and drew water out of the well of Bethlehem that was by the gate and took it and brought it to David. But David would not drink of it, but poured it out unto the Lord and said, my God forbid it me that I should, that I should do this thing. Shall I drink the blood of these men which have put their lives in jeopardy? For with the jeopardy of their lives, they bought it. Therefore, he would not drink it. These Things did these three mightiest. The Bible talks to us about how we as people need to live. And we can find great truths from the Word of God as how we as Christians are supposed to be followers of God and how we can honor people. In this passage that we're going to study today, we're going to see how God lays out for us how David honored mighty heroes who had, were willing to give their lives willing to sacrifice their own blood so that he could have the freedom to enjoy things. I remember the statement from our president, Calvin Coolidge, a nation which forgets its defenders will itself 
be forgotten. And this is a powerful quote. You know, Memorial Day was created as a way to honor these fallen heroes. It was meant to be a solemn day. However, the meaning has changed much in the last few years. We're going to give you a brief history of it right now, but tonight we're going to go very much in depth into it. Memorial Day was originally set up to be observed on the last Monday of May. It was an honor of men and women who died serving in the U.S. military. This year it occurs on Monday, May 25th. It was originally known as Decorations Day. It originated the years after the Civil War by a, some people say it was by a colonel up in Maine. Some people say it was by a general down in Massachusetts. Everyone, no one knows the exact starting of it. All we know is that Americans as a people said, we need to remember the fallen. We need to remember those who said, I will give up everything. I'll give up everything so that someone else could be free. Many Americans observe Memorial Day by visiting cemeteries or memorials. Some do it by holding family gatherings, participating in parades. It unofficially marks the beginning of the season. Some people, they get a little bit confused. They say, listen, if you're just celebrating with your family, that doesn't honor Memorial Day. Yes, it does. Because that's why people gave their lives. They gave their lives so you could be free. But when we celebrate our families, that's a time when we should stop and we should pray together. We should honor the lives and the sacrifices of those men that were made so that we could remind and tell our children. I'll say it again. A nation which forgets its defenders will be itself forgotten. We need to remember we must remember. We must tell others. We must tell our children. In the Bible, in the book of Deuteronomy, God tells that his people to write the words of God on the, on the, on the hearts and minds of their children. Tell them to literally paste it in front of their eyes if need to be. Put it on the door. Tell people about our God. Tell people about our history. This way they won't forget. I am fearful that our young people have forgotten. Our young people have forgotten what they once knew. They've forgotten why our nation is great. I was reading the other day a study that was done, and they interviewed this group of fourth graders, this large group of fourth graders, and they said, who was the United States' greatest enemy during the Cold War? Now, most of us who grew up in school and grew up studying history would obviously say the Soviet Union. However, this group of fourth graders who had just got done taking their tests answered by a majority the greatest enemy that the United States faced during the Cold War was France. France. France wasn't even in the Cold War. France was on our side in the Cold War. But they were so uninformed. They had been so untaught. They, were, they had been so taught things that just didn't matter. And we as a nation must look back to the Bible and see how David, from the word of God, honored heroes. Or else our nation will be forgotten. You see, David's kingdom stood strong and firm while David honored those who had fought for his kingdom greatly. His son Solomon, his kingdom held strong until the end of his kingdom when Solomon stopped listening and started following after his own ways. And then when his son Rehoboam, just the grandson of King David, walked away from the counsel of the wise warriors who had guided his father and grandfather, the kingdom fell and was split in two. The Bible makes it very, very clear in the book of Chronicles. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray, then will I hear from heaven. And our nation needs to get back to praying to the almighty God, thanking him for his deliverance to us, thanking him that he's blessed our nation, and then reminding our young people to thank those who have gone before them, to thank the soldier who came home, to honor the soldier who died and never came home, to tell the mother who's sick sitting at home with an empty chair and no son or no daughter that we have not forgotten them. But so many of us have not followed this because we are, we've gotten wrapped up. It's not that we're bad people. It's that we've gotten busy with things that don't matter. Let's look at God's words, how David honored heroes and how, he, how it relates to us, 
how we can honor those heroes today. The first thing that you see that David did in 1 Chronicles chapter number 11 is David recognized the people or persons. He recognized the person or the people. You see this whole chapter that David wrote was a hero's chapter. He said, hey, for the rest of time, I want everyone to know these are our heroes. They're not perfect. They're not divine. They're not, they're not somehow or another different. In except for the fact that they put their lives on the line every day. Some of the heroes he listed in this list passed away fighting for the kingdom, fighting for the glory of God, fighting for to defend their own people. One of the men, the Bible tells us, stood at the front of a line and fought while the army literally retreated behind him. He stood his ground and fought till they took his life. And David said, I'm going to remember those men. And I'm going to write this down. And every young person who comes through our kingdom, they are going to know who these men are. The Bible tells us in Romans chapter number 13, render therefore to all their dues, tribute and who tribute is due, custom, who's custom to whom custom, fear to whom fear, honor to whom honor. You ever hear the statement, give honor to whom honor is due? This is where it comes from. We are to honor those who gave their lives. We are to honor those who are willing to sacrifice. The Bible says that we're to do this. Give honor, give tribute, give knowledge. So many people say, well, uh, I don't know if I agree with everything they did. I don't agree with everything. I don't agree with everything I do. Do you? Do you agree with everything you do? No, but we can give honor to whom honor is due. We can give the greatness that is deserved. Many of these people were young people who just said, I am willing to write a check with a blank amount up to my life so that others could be free. We said it earlier, greater love hath no man than this, than a man lay down his life for his friends. And David wrote a whole chapter. In fact, it's included in multiple books of the Bible of these heroes of the faith, these heroes who were men who stood for their country. And David said, everyone should know who they are. And he tells the stories and the stories are awesome. Some people come and say, the Bible is boring. I don't find the Bible exciting. Read the story of Shama standing in the mountain of beans. He stands over this hill of lentils. And when everyone in the whole army runs away, as the bad army comes, he stands there and says, you guys can't have my, you can't have my lentils. You, you can't have my field of beans. These beans are God's beans. These beans are the kingdom's beans. I'm not giving up a foot. That is the story that David wanted to tell. And David said, listen, we need to recognize. We need to recognize these people. We need to recognize. We need to let other people know who these people are. So other people can know. So other people can stand. So that other people can hear the word of God. So other people can feel the memory of these you know, a couple years ago, I got the honor to be a part of the Grand Ledge Memorial Day Parade. And I say honor because every time I go there, it doesn't, it, um, it does feel like I am wholly inadequate to stand there. Wholly inadequate to stand next to these men and women who are willing to give their lives. And then I feel so much less as I stand usually next to a mom or a dad who stands there as the men play taps and the 21 gun salute goes off and they stand there with tears rolling down their eyes and they tell me, it's for my son, it's for my daughter. I'm here today because they aren't. Hey, we need to recognize those people. We need to recognize those families. We need to tell those families, hey, we hear you. You're not forgotten. Hey, your son or daughter gave everything. Your husband or wife gave everything so we could be free. And David said, hey, I'm going to remember all these people. I'm going to remember them so that in my generation, my children will know who they are. And as long as my children know who they are, we will not be forgotten. Unfortunately, some of his children did forget. And we heard what happens when that happened. And I believe our nation is just one generation away from forgetting the greatest generation, from forgetting the Civil War heroes who stood there and said, I will die a death so that every man could be free, 
so that every woman and child could breathe the same air as I and be recognized, as Abraham Lincoln said, as all men created equal under God. That is our freedom. That is our stand. That is our hope. The second thing we have to do is we have to retell their story. We have to retell their sacrifice. Hey, David made it very clear. I'm going to tell everyone about this. I'm going to tell everyone. And the Bible says in James chapter 1, But whosoever looketh unto the perfect law of liberty continue therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. Hey, don't just hear what they did. Honor it. Don't just hear what they did. Tell other people what they did. Listen, I am, I am so concerned for our generation. Because our generation is growing up not knowing the goodness of God. They're not growing up knowing up the goodness of our nation. They don't understand. Right now there are people all over the world who are starving. We have, uh, as a church, try to feed young people. We give away food to the needy as often as we can. This last month we've given away just about 13,000 pounds. It's keeping us rather busy. But as we were talking about some of the things that were going on here, there's so many doing so much more even than we're doing. Helping out people. <clears throat> but I remember talking to someone. They said, yeah, we don't do that. We don't eat that. We don't. And I thought, what a wonderful, wonderful blessing that we live in a nation where people who are even hungry have the right to be picky. Isn't that amazing? Some of you go, oh, no, no, no. Listen, we live in a nation where there's so much. Even those who are in need say, oh, I can be picky. Because I understand most of us could lose 10, 20 pounds and it wouldn't hurt us a bit. But folks, there are people all over the world today who don't have that option. They literally are on the brink of starvation. I was talking to a missionary friend of mine who talked about how people will go through the streets and search trash cans in India to find food to survive. Talked to a missionary friend of mine who worked in Haiti who said, literally, you see these people just starving and wanting anything that you'll give them, they'll eat because they're that hungry. He said, it makes you grateful that you're in America. Folks, we should be so grateful we're in America. We have this perfect law. We have been given this wonderful gift. Let's just not hear it. Let's be a doer. Let's be a proclaimer of how good it is and how great it is. Is it perfect? No. Our nation is far from perfect. Our nation is often divided. Our nation is often conflicted. Our nation is often fighting amongst them, one amongst each other, going on and on and on. But is that any different than the Civil War? Is that any different than so many other times of our nation? The world media wants to tell you that this is somehow or another new. Do you not think that during the middle of the Civil War, that people were not afraid? That they were not concerned? That there was not divisiveness? Do you think that during the middle of World War II, when people are hearing stories of a Holocaust and people being literally murdered by the millions, that people were not concerned? There has been a constant raging war within the world to turn us away from God. And it's because the prince of the power of the air wants to destroy our nation. And I am grateful for men and women who have made a stand to stand up for faith and gospel and for teaching of the word of God because it is needed. And I am also grateful, and I think we should be too, for soldiers who have stood in, in the exact battlefield at the moment in time saying, I'll give everything so that someone else's children will be free. I'll lose the chance to have a child. So another child could stand in my place. We need to retell their story. We need to tell the stories of how heroes proved in liberating strife. Who more than self their country loved. And mercy more than life. It's an amazing thought. But we need to tell that thought. We must tell that thought. The final thing we must do is we must relay the honor to God. When you heard the story from 1 Chronicles where David told the story and David said, Hey, listen, there came a day when we were at there, when the enemy was at the gate and the enemy had literally conquered my hometown. 
And the enemy sat there and they took it. And our water supply wasn't the best tasting. It wasn't the best that I wanted. And I sat there and thought what it would be to go home and drink some water out of the hometown well. If you ever noticed, the water at home tastes the best. And David sits there and just cavalierly mentions this. And the three warriors who stood beside him looked at each other and looked at the enemy line and said, that enemy line doesn't look that bad. That enemy line doesn't look that strong. That enemy line, oh yeah, it's bad. It's strong. But you know what? Our king has a wish. Our king's thirsty. We can get through that line. I remember the day I sat down with one of our members of our church and he told me, about how he was shot during the Battle of the Bulge in Germany. How he had been awarded medals. He humbly just said, it was just doing my job. I remember sitting there with one of our World War II vets as he told me how he was a medic on the beaches of Normandy and how that he could hear the screams of people who were crying out for hope. I remember sitting there with my grandfather as he told me the story about how he was a Korean War veteran. And how he remember sitting there inside as he was the radio man in the ship and could hear the bombs whizzing past his radio stop that he was in. And he jumped down and the captain said, what are you doing? He said, I'm scared. And the captain said, get back to your post or we all die. He said, I got back to my post. He said, I learned that day that if I got scared, it was more important that I be scared and do my job and save the rest of the ship than be scared and hide. I remember the, sitting there with my grandmother as she sat there and looked at me and pulled out a picture of a young man who at the time looked an awful lot like me. She looked at me and said, you always look, Joe, like my brother. This is my brother, Roger. Now, I had never met Roger. And I thought it interesting because I had gone to all the family reunions. I had thought I had met all of my grandmother's family, but I had never seen this brother. Said, Why have I never seen this brother? And he said, because this brother, this is the brother who died in the sands of Iwo Jima. So, Joe, you could be free. He said, it's time that you understand the price of freedom. And these are their stories. And we need to retell their stories. And then we need to relay the honor to God. Because you see what David did in 1 Chronicles chapter number 11. When the three men broke through the lines. And these three men did these great battles. And they did these great deeds. And they brought it back to David. And David looked at it and said, Be the, all the honor and praise to God. He poured, but poured it out unto the Lord. He said, but God forbid it that I should do this thing. Should I drink the blood of these men that have put their lives in jeopardy? With their lives, they bought it. He said, listen, they did this to honor and praise the Lord God. I'm going to put it up as a sacrifice to show the whole world this is the honor. If the only person gets the honor, it's the God in heaven. Because these men are the type of men who God will honor. Relay the honor and glory to God. I've sat with hundreds of veterans throughout the years. After doing multiple Memorial Day parades, you get to talk to a lot of them. And I found a common denominator for most of them. I would say 95% of them say a simple thing. I'll say something like, thank you for your service. And they'll respond back. Well, thank you. I was just doing my job. I don't want the honor. Honor the guys who didn't come home. I was just doing my job. It was my honor to serve my country. And then some of them will add this in there. I was serving my God. I was serving my country. The best way I knew how. Hey, that is what we're called to do. Relay the honor to God. Relay the glory to God. Relay the power to God. Thank God for America. Thank God for our freedom. Thank God that he has given us a great and powerful hope. But listen, let's be honest. We'll only be the land of the free and the home of the brave as long as there are brave men and women willing to fight and die for us to be free. As long as there are brave women and women who are willing to say, I will follow the biblical example of God where he said, greater love hath no man than this than a man lay down his life for his friends. I love the Star Spangled Banner. 
It's one of my favorite songs to sing, oh, oh say can you see by the dawn's early light. But most people don't know the last verse. There's more than one verse. There's another verse that goes like this, oh thus be it ever, when free men shall stand between their loved homes and the war's desolation, dressed in victory and peace, may the heaven rescue land. Praise the God that hath made and preserved us a nation. And conquer we must, for our cause it is just. And this be our motto. In God is our trust. And the star-spangled banner and triumph shall reign o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave. It's time our nation gets back to God. It's time our nation gets back to honoring those who stood for victory and peace. It's time that we come back and follow the lesson that David taught us from 1 Chronicles. It's time that we recognize. It's time that we retell. It's time that we relay. I hope you've enjoyed the Sunday School lesson. And we'll look forward to seeing you at 11 a.m. today for our services and for our 6 p.m. picnic at the church. May God bless you and keep you till we meet again. You are dismissed.